Hello viewers, welcome to this video. I'm Venkat and this is Just Me, an open source channel. Right, this is going to be a very quick video and um, I wanted to show you a couple of tools that you uh, you can use with your Kubernetes cluster um, when you are when you are learning about Kubernetes or even in production. Uh, although there are other uh, effective tools, um, you could th these tools that I'm going to uh, show you a quick demo in this video uh, will be of uh, great use. These are nice little tools uh, that you can use. So the two tools that I'm going to use today. Um, I came across while I was doing a video and uh, I thought it would be nice to share this with um, with you guys so that's why I ended up doing this video uh, so cube ops view so that's the first one I'll be doing now and then we'll look at cube box um, so cube ops view is for uh, visualization it's just read only and you can visualize your cluster uh, how many nodes you've got, um, what parts are running, how healthy your system is, and so on. Um, it's read-only, you can interact with it, but you won't be able to manage your cluster, although you can visualize your cluster. Cubebox is, again, a, a terminal uh, console for your cluster, um, as well as a web console. Um, you, you can see what's going on in your cluster, basically. Um, I think both these tools are in uh, in their early development stage, so they might uh, add more features to it. But as of now, um, as it is, as it stands now, uh, it's quite usable and quite. Um, I found them very useful, so I just wanted to share with you uh, these nice tools. <coughs> okay, so I've got my Kubernetes cluster already running using LXC containers. Kubectl get nodes I've got three nodes a master node and two worker nodes all are CentOS 7 virtual machines kubectl version um, version is 1.13.4 that shouldn't matter it can be installed on any uh, Kubernetes cluster <coughs> okay so how do we deploy kubeops view and how does it look like search for kubeops view and there is this GitHub link from Hutch Jacobs. Click that one and have a read through the uh, the install documentation. It's quite simple. Uh, it's just uh, one command. Uh, you're gonna basically download this uh, repository and install the uh, deploy the manifests. So let's um, clone this repo. Copy that git clone kubeops view cd to kubeops view and then cd to deploy okay so these are the yaml files that we are going to deploy so i don't have ingress controller in my cluster so i don't need that one so i'm going to delete that ingress.yaml i don't need that so it's going to deploy um, Redis for memory caching and that's the main deployment file if you want you can have a look through what's inside the deployment and there is this service.yaml that we will be accessing from the web console um, one thing I wanted to change before deploying this is by default uh, when you deploy this um, the service uh, will be a cluster IP so you would have to use kubectl proxy or kubectl port forward uh, to access to access the uh, the kubeops view dashboard but instead I'm going to change that to node port so vi service dot yaml I'm going to change the type from cluster IP to node port that's it and now we can deploy all these yaml files kubectl create minus f Dot. So that will deploy all these manifests in your cluster. So it has created a few resources, service accounts, cluster role, cluster role binding, um, the service for Redis, service for kubeops view. Okay, kubectl gets all. They're all running. You can see the uh, the kubeops view service. So that's what we are going to access from the uh, from the browser. 
and there is this uh, Redis service which is a cluster IP that Cubops View uses for caching the memory. Okay, so the node port is 32212. So let's go and see how the Cubops View dashboard looks like. 32212. So you can access it from any of your worker nodes. Okay, worker 1, 32212. Cool. So that's the dashboard. That's how it looks like. And if you want to uh, scale it a big, a bit bigger, append this to the URL slash hash scale equals 2.0. Press enter, and it will scale two times bigger. Okay. So you've got three master nodes. So that's your cluster with three nodes. Uh, the cluster IP address. This is K master, K worker two, K worker, K worker one, K worker two, and the first bar here shows the CPU. So it shows four blocks. So which means there are four CPU, and the next one is the memory, how much is uh, utilized, and these uh, green boxes are the pods. It can be deployment. Uh, it can be a daemon set. It can be uh, a replica set. And so on and if you hover your mouse over any of the boxes you get a pop-up uh, saying what it's uh, how much CPU it's using how much memory it's using what's the state of the container uh, what namespace uh, the pod belongs to and so on so as you can see I haven't got much resources on the worker node so the CPU is uh, idle uh, not much memory is used uh, whereas in the K master I've got lots of pods and you can see the CPU is a uh, little bit used. Okay, and there are a few things that you can do. Uh, sort by name or sort by age. So when the pod was created, so the more recent the pod was created, it will appear on the right uh, end. Age, memory, so based on the memory utilization, uh, the pods uh, get arranged here. Uh, based on CPU utilization, status, name. So name is the default. And this one here is the, the UI theme. You can change the colors. There are some predefined colors. Green, gray, high contrast, Polaroid, sepia, black and white, default. Okay, so that's a very simple tool. And uh, it can uh, be quite handy uh, in your environment. Maybe you can uh, uh, have it on a separate screen uh, and keep an eye on it, how your cluster is looking, how many pods are there, how busy uh, the worker nodes are, and the CPU and memory utilization and so on. It gives you a, a good view of your cluster. Okay, so let's try and create some pods and see what happens. Okay. Um, kubectl run nginx. I'm going to deploy a simple nginx container and you will see the animation here and you can see where the pod goes to actually where the pod gets scheduled um, the default is just one replica not specifying any replicas and there you see the animation and the pod has gone to k worker one and you can see the status as container is getting created and uh, the green icon shows the container is healthy and it's ready so let's try to scale this uh, deployment. kubectl scale deploy nginx to replicas 5. So I'm scaling from one replica to five replicas and you'll see the animation in real time. Okay, so it's been it's being scaled now. And you can see those things here. So two pods has gone to kworker1 and another two has gone to kworker2. So all of them are healthy green and they are all running kubectl get pods so all the nginx pods are running now let's try and scale it down to see the animation kubectl scale deploy nginx replicas to back to one you will see those uh, cross a red cross saying that the pods are being terminated nice little animation so in a real time you can see uh, what's going on in your cluster so that's basically it and let's go and look at the next tool which is cube box 
Okay, so to delete this uh, CubeOps view, uh, in this directory where you created all the resources using kubectl create minus f dot, we're going to do kubectl delete minus f dot. All deleted kubectl get all. That's getting terminated. kubectl delete deploy nginx. Let's clear everything. kubectl get all. Okay, everything is gone. So now let's look at cube box. Cube box. Okay, so that's the uh, the first GitHub link here. Um, you can deploy it in a couple of ways based on whether you want to access it from a terminal or from a web browser. Okay, you don't want to clone this channel, but clone this repo. Basically, the, the UI will look like this. I'll show you when I deploy it. So basically, you're going to download this executable. If you're on Linux, uh, OS X, or Windows, depending on your distribution, just download the uh, the appropriate link. So we are downloading the binary uh, cube box and then uh, setting the execute permission on it. Copy that and paste it. Okay, so that's been downloaded and you can see cube ops, sorry, cube box there. Let me delete cube ops view. RM minus RF cube ops view. Okay, so we've got the cube box there. Um, just run it using dot slash cube box. Let me run it from a uh, different terminal so that you get a good view of it. CD to play directory. So that's where I've got the cube box downloaded. So if I run dot slash cube box you get the terminal. So when you open it uh, for the first time, it's going to ask you which namespace you want to um, look at. So default, there, is, there are no parts running on uh, on the default namespace. So if you want to switch to a different namespace, type N. That will bring up this dialog and you can change the, uh, the namespace. And hit enter once you select the namespace and you will be in that namespace. So these are the parts on the cube system namespace. You can select any of the parts and press enter. Say, for example, if I want to look at the cube scheduler master, K master, and if I press enter, on the bottom window, you see the logs for that part. And on the right window, you see the memory utilization, CPU utilization, and the uh, the network IO. OK, so, so currently it's showing the memory graph uh, that's the usage and that's the cache memory. And if you want to look at CPU type C, so that's a CPU graph, user and the total, um, and type T to go to the network stats. Network usage unavailable. Okay, C for CPU, M for memory, and N for switching the namespace. Okay, and N for switching the namespace. Let's go to the default and uh, try creating a pod. It's all uh, in real time, so when you create a new pod, it's going to appear here. Let's try and do that. kubectl run nginx minus minus image nginx. And you can see that pod appeared here, container creating and the age of the pod. Um, so it's running, and if you type enter, you will see the logs. So at the moment, the Nginx logs is empty, and uh, memory utilization, CPU, everything is empty. The part has just been created, and there's no activity in that part. OK. Uh, let's scale this. kubectl scale deploy Nginx to 5. Immediately, you see uh, the changes on the cube box in real time. So all these. Uh, running, container creating, and all of them are running now. kubectl delete deploy 
nginx okay so everything is getting terminated and you can see the terminating uh, the status as terminating so it's a nice little tool uh, you won't be able to interact with it you can see the logs um, you can see the memory utilization in a nice graph in terminal uh, okay the other thing I wanted to show you is this is the terminal console you can also deploy cube box um, as a resource in your cluster itself and you can access it from a web console let me show that to quit this type Q and that will be gone RM minus F cube box okay that's gone and now let's see how to deploy it as a, as a resource so we downloaded the binary we changed the we set the execute permission and then we ran it so that will uh, open up a terminal console view of your cluster and there is uh, the cluster version kubectl create minus f kubernetes.yaml so this one I'm just going to download this YAML file and make a small change to it because by default it will use cluster IP so I want to use noteboard service so I'm going to copy that and wget that URL so we have downloaded that YAML file let's edit that kubernetes.yaml service uh, I'm going to tell this to be a node port service and I don't have an ingress controller so I'm going to you can either leave it or you can delete this section okay that's done and now we can apply it kubectl create minus f kubernetes.yaml Again, it has created a service, a deployment, service account, cluster role, and cluster role binding. kubectl get all. Okay, the container is getting created at the moment. Okay, the container is running and the cube box service can be accessed using node port 32009. Let's check it out. Kworker1 or Kworker2, any of the worker nodes. 32009 okay cool so it's the same interface but uh, from a web console and as a resource in your kubernetes cluster you don't have to download the binary but I uh, personally prefer the web sorry the terminal console default you can see the cube box pod running press enter and you see the memory CPU network stats and the logs in the bottom window okay delete that close the window and kubectl delete minus f kubernetes.yaml kubectl get all container is getting terminated okay cool I think um, that's it um, it's a quick one and I wanted to share this very useful uh, tools if you are especially if you are learning Kubernetes this will come handy uh, you don't have to type in lots of commands to see what's going on in your cluster you can just have a, uh, have an eye on your cluster how healthy what's going on inside your, inside your cluster <coughs> um, how densely the pods are scheduled on each of the worker nodes um, CPU memory utilization of the uh, worker nodes and if the pod is healthy uh, if the pod is having problems, if a replica set is being scaled up or scaled down, you can see everything from CubeOps view. <coughs> um, one thing I haven't tried is uh, CubeOps view. You can have multiple clusters in the dashboard, but I um, I haven't tested that. I was just showing you one cluster, but you can have multiple clusters in the CubeOps view dashboard. Uh, so I'm going to leave that with you to play with. Um, let me know your comments and uh, if you've got any questions please leave me a comment right um, I think um, I hope this video was uh, useful uh, please share it with your friends if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel I will see you all in my next video bye bye